The original concept of the sculpture actually came to me, it's probably five years ago. But through commissions and other works I was doing, it never happened, but it always sits there. It's always a thought. It really boils down to a moment. I was sitting at a moment when I did not have a commission sitting in front of me to distract me from taking this path. I did not have other obligations, but instead of hunkering down, I just changed my perspective on this and said, what can I do? How can I seize this moment of freedom, of time? We all have thoughts. We all think of things. What does it take to get something from a thought to an object or something that is, is shared? It's very interesting if you, if you drew back the perspective lens to the evolution of my, my art and my design, there is a big component in that that is probably driven by the ability to do it myself. The fact of how much I have to be, personally be in it. They are built in my experience. They're built in my discovery. And so that means I have to be doing so much of that. It builds in elements, in, in forms that apparatus can help lift it and move it and build it. The process I used in working on Convergence, it utilizes a lot of technologies, creating the armatures and the understructures which are, which are very necessary with the amount of weights that I'm dealing with and the materials. But what I design into the sculptures is tremendous amount of opportunities for improvisation. In this particular shape, I've used the armature to that at, a, at one particular perspective straight on, the form actually defies itself because you see straight through its armature. When you look straight on, it's about half the mass that it is as you shift around to the side. And there again, you're looking at the same thing, but it's a play on that perspective that based on your perspective, your experience changes. The work from thought to, to completion is constantly infused with decisions and layers and options. It can start with layers of thought, layers of material, layers of form, and even layers of surface and color. through chemicals and through heat and through polish and through manipulation with that, I can evoke all these different emotions out of this, these different materials that I'm using. I can evoke, you know, is something old, you know, which, which has its own visceral feelings or is something new? Is it reflective? Is it, is it bouncing back its surrounding counterparts in this, in this sculpture? Or is it absorbing their light and making them become ambiguous and disappear? I mean, these are all very subtle parts of the story that hopefully allow for an experience that ties it even more so into not the form that you're looking at, but the complexity of the person experiencing it. The lens element of this sculpture is made out of a thousand pound piece of metal very raw metal and it's, it's spun you know, and, 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 and basically pounded into shape. And so the inside of that surface, which I want to be a polished surface, is a very raw, rough metal finish that I knew was probably about 150 man hours just to grind that surface down and create that high polish.
exciting to see it emerge because you are literally inside of this dish as it's, as it's evolving, going around and around. That was one of the most difficult physically elements of this sculpture, just being in that dish day after day after day because it could not be attached until it was done. One of the things that I find fascinating is that form isn't always defined by the form itself, but form can be defined by the absence, the negative space that that form occupies. And so by selectively placing the panels, it allows the opportunity for someone to understand the importance of what's not there is just as, bit as important as what is there. It's the start of the very exciting improvisational part of this process. I look at the spot, I get a feel of the shape, there's no measurements taken off of it, it's purely, you look like that, I take it to my beat bag, I bang out the shape and put it on and finish it off just smacking it into in place at that part. And, and, this is, and the energy picks up, there's such a, there's such a roller coaster of crescendos and, and excitement in a sculpture like this. The less interruption I can offer between the act of placing and that act of making that decision to the final presentation of it actually provides the truer connection, that point of convergence of the emotion and the physical point. I say it's like walking a tightrope at 200 feet without a net. You will smell the wind, you feel the threads under your feet. There's an awareness in that that makes the experience so much more rich and, and, and offering as an artist. So what I've done is many of my many of the sculptures are they're allegories, they're, they're stories, they're ways of sharing essentially what distills down to a feeling or an emotion that is very intangible. And convergence really is about that that point where this convergence of thought through action, through implementation to physical manifestation. And so in doing that, the metaphor I chose was a camera. And using that as the story in this piece, it was to take, if you were to, if you were to look at a photographer as an artist, you have its subject, you have the photographer, and you have that aperture. And that is the point when the artist takes what they're seeing and feeling and captures it in a moment, in that convergence. And so that is why there is this figure sitting at that moment, illustrating this point of intangible to tangible, and that's where it meets. And it really, it brings you in, and then it really can come out and become something else. I think the greatest thing that came out of this was the exercise of accepting that you've pulled the trigger and don't be scared that you did it because that's only gonna hurt you. And just plowing through something with everything you've got to see what comes out the other side. That wraps in so much emotion into the sculpture that I don't think you could ever achieve if it was a sort of a sign, sealed, deliver experience. If it's important to keep growing and keep pushing yourself, I think that might have been the point it took 20 years to realize that it's really not about taking what you've learned and mastering it, but it's understanding how much more you have to learn. And that's really, I think, what happened in this experience.